Hey, it's Jared here for Chart Tech. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to replace the stock thermal uh, compound from your GP. So you'll need a few things. You'll need your graphics card, some thermal compound, as well as something to remove the old thermal compound from the GPU die. Generally, I use paper towels and some isopropyl alcohol, but today I'm going to forego the isopropyl alcohol. So I've already taken off the standard backplate on the GPU because it's slightly different than most graphics cards, although it is generally the same process for all of them. So you'll be going and removing the screws around it, except for the ones in the center, four which are spring-loaded because those are the ones in the GPU die. So those actually need to be removed in a special way. They have to be taken off in an X pattern and you can also tell that they're the GPU die because they are in a square pattern as well as spring-loaded as I said before. Also a warning, doing this will void your warranty unless inside the US because those warranty void if removed stickers are illegal. However, proceed at your own risk because there is a chance that you could damage your graphics card and that's on you man. Now we're removing these in an X pattern to not put a sizable amount of strain on one side of the GPU die compared to another which would cause it to break. So now that we have this unscrewed we're going to be able to remove the PCB from the heatsink. Now you're going to want to just kind of lift off gently as there is a cable that connects the PCB to the heatsink for the fans. Now as I said earlier we'll be needing a method to remove the old thermal compound from the GPU die as well as the heatsink. So we had already redone the compound on this but we're going to be redoing it once more for this video. So I'll be using some paper towels to remove the thermal compound from the heat sink as well as the GPU die. Sometimes I'll use isopropyl alcohol to aid me in this process. If you're going to go along that route, which does make it easier, you'll be needing 70% or higher isopropyl alcohol. You can find it generally at Walmart or any local pharmacy. Now I want the 70% or higher because it is less electrically conductive than anything lower because it contains a less amount of water. and be sure to give it time to dry, which is generally a couple of seconds, before you uh, put it back on so it's not retaining water. So now you'll be taking your thermal compound of choice. You'll be wanting to use something non-electrically conductive as there are so many surface mount devices around your GPU. As you can see them around there, they're just tiny little devices that if they were to short out, it would be extremely bad for your GPU. So now we're gonna take our thermal compound. I'm using Noctua, and it is non electrically conductive, and it's generally picked up for fairly cheap. I got quite a few uses out of it, and it does pretty well thermally. So with GPU dies, there is a lower tolerance than CPU dies because CPUs have a heat spreader over top of the die, which allows the heat to be dissipated more evenly. Or with our GPU, the heat sink is going to be making direct contact, so we have lower tolerances on our GPU. So we want to try to get as much thermal compound coverage on there as possible because of the zero tolerance which could cost your GPU to die. I generally put a lot of thermal compound on there. If you think it's too much, just go watch one of Jay's Two Senses videos where he shows that you can never put too much thermal compound on the GPU. You cannot thermally insulate it, but we're just trying to get as much on there as possible. Even EK Water Blocks recommends a load of thermal compound. So, as I said, I'll be using a lot. I generally like to put a larger glob in the middle and try to hit all four corners as well as the two middles just so I can ensure that there is an even amount of thermal compound on the die. So 
So in order to put this back on to the PCB, we're going to gently lay it on top of there and align our screw holes. Now sometimes your I.O. bracket may get in the way, so I suggest putting this on top of a cardboard box and letting the I.O. bracket kind of hang off. So now that we have it placed perfectly-ish on the heat sink we're gonna do these in a cross pattern once more but with a little caveat we're going to only screw these down slightly and then we'll finish it off but again we're still going in our cross pattern so we'll do each screw screwed down in slightly and then we'll finish it off by screwing everything down the rest of the way and again we're doing this in a cross pattern to ensure even pressure on the GPU die so we do not crack it and kill the GPU. Now you'll end up finishing off by putting the back plate back on and screwing all the rest of the screws in that you had taken off originally. However, I'm not going to be doing this for this particular video. It's just something you should keep in mind to do. So now let's talk about why you may or may not want to be doing this on your GPU. Now, a couple of reasons why you're going to be wanting to do this is because it could give you better performance on either an old card or a new card just because the stock thermal compound is either wearing out or in the case of the new card the thermal compound is designed to be used in the stored for long term and used long term so it's not necessarily the best performing compound and if you're wondering why you shouldn't do this well that's because there is a possibility you could kill your GPU but it's not necessarily likely that it will happen. Just remember, do this at your own risk.